Well everybody, WWDC has come and gone, and in this video I want to quickly recap everything before we start to deep dive into all the iOS betas and iPadOS betas here in the coming days. So without further ado, let's see exactly what WWDC entailed this year. Let's get into it. So let's get started with the recap of WWDC 2024. We're going to keep this short and concise, and then we'll have some subsequent videos once we get the betas installed to actually walk you guys through some top features for all the different OSs that we got today. So the first one Apple started with was with Vision OS 2. There are three main things to know about this one. The first one that I thought was the absolute coolest one is that we finally have different views, different aspect ratios, and different sizes for whenever you're able to use your Vision Pro alongside your Mac as a secondary or main display. Apple showed an awesome demo of a ultra wide angle display that's kind of encompassing, I don't know, pretty much 180 degrees of your actual view and still being able to work on your Mac. So I think that's an amazing new feature that I'm surprised wasn't there when the first version of Vision OS did come out. Secondly, you'll be able to now rearrange your home screen as you are able to rearrange any home screen on let's say like an iPad or an iPhone, which again was a surprise that wasn't out with Vision OS 1. And lastly, they added a new interaction to let you know time, battery life, date, and things like that because people were noticing that it's kind of like a casino inside of Vision OS where you aren't really aware of the time or how much battery you have left because there isn't anything persistent on the screen. So now you're able to kind of move your hand into the actual view to let you know exactly how much time there is, how much battery life you have, and access control center just that much quicker. We also got some updates to some more immersive video that's coming out, some more immersive content. Spatial photos are now making a debut, and we will be getting this in multiple countries starting this summer. So finally, it's not US specific, but there are other countries which I'll list right here. So if you're looking at enough to be one of the countries listed right here, you can now demo those Vision Pros in store. So now let's talk about iOS 18 and what to expect on your new iPhones with the new update. And again, like I mentioned, we will have videos of everything kind of going deeper, but here's a high level. So first off, we were right about having a new customizable home screen, which Apple is now letting us move applications around wherever we want, being able to move multiple apps and kind of putting them on the bottom row without having to follow that grid format that we've known for years. So that's a welcome addition. Secondly, we got a new dark mode version, so it changes not only the actual view of like your wallpaper and some of the settings, but now it also changes the hue of your apps from a light color now to a darker color. And then also you can change the color in total of all the applications by adding different hues and different color variations, very similar to how you choose your colors in your current lock screen when you choose a color of let's say your time and things like that. So that is now all customizable and more of an appearance and personalization thing than anything else. Another new big update is going to be the control center, which got a lot more customizable. You kind of saw in the demo that the icons change a little bit. You now have fully round icons, some still square but rounded off icons. And then also you can now fully customize it the same way that you customize something like your home screen. So you can move different widgets around, move different applications around. And then also there are different views and more in-depth views for different portions of your control center, like music or like the actual remote control of Apple TV and things like that. And then those same widgets that are being used on the control center can now be used and moved over to your lock screen widgets and are also interactable like they are inside of the control center. And then finally, we are able to change those shortcuts on the bottom right and bottom left of your lock screen. It has always been the flashlight on the left and the camera on the right, but now you can customize it to whatever you want, which is something that I've wanted for years and years now, so that's great to see. And then those same control center shortcuts can also be mapped to your action button if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. So a lot more integration, a lot more customization, and just easier to use from a personalization standpoint. Apple then moved on to iMessage. iMessage got a bunch of new features where, again, it made it a little bit more fun to use, a little easier to use. So the first update they got was tapbacks. When Apple released tapbacks inside of iMessage, I thought it was amazing because it's a way to kind of acknowledge somebody or something whenever you get a message without having to actually send a message back. But now tapbacks get a little bit more in depth by being able to add emojis as opposed to just having a thumbs up and thumbs down. Now you can add any emoji you want to any message itself. But then we also got some other updates like being able to schedule messages, being able to animate text effects, and being able to actually format different text as well by adding underlines and strike throughs and bolding and italicizing different parts of a message. We also got some updates to mail, to maps, to the wallet application for better integration and new event tickets. We got a new journal update so you can now search old journal entries that you had before. So a little bit more in terms of what we get from a feature set standpoint inside of the journals app. And then they redesigned the photos application in totality by making it just a little bit more easy to use by adding a new view on the bottom third of the screen, being able to maybe cut out screenshots and receipts and things that are not applicable to whatever you're searching. So that's always great to see, just making it easier without getting rid of the stuff that you want, but just making it a little bit easier to navigate and format and be able to use whenever you are maybe looking for an old photo from years past. 
Apple then moved on to an audio and home section, and there's two big things that I want to mention here. First is going to be AirPods Pro, and then being able to gesture and to interact with Siri when you have your AirPods Pro on. But the coolest part is that, let's say you're getting a phone call and you're in a crowded area, you can now nod up and down for yes, and nod side to side for no, if you want to take that phone call without having to say, you know, hey blank, or without having to say anything at all. And then tvOS is going to get a new update that's called Insight, which is very similar to what Amazon has. I don't know if you've ever used the Amazon Prime to get all that information, but this is a little bit more real time where it's, let's say you're watching a movie and you don't know the actor's name, you pull up the Insight and in real time it'll find out who that actor is, you get deeper into the actor's biography, but then also little things that you wouldn't even have noticed, like maybe there's background music playing in whatever movie or show you're watching, and you want to find out what that song is, and then add it to your Apple playlist and things like that. So there's a lot of integration, and again, it talks to the entire ecosystem, so it's able to maybe play alongside things like Apple Music. Apple then moved on to watchOS 11, and watchOS is one of these things that's getting more and more nuanced as time goes on, because there's only so much you can do with such a small screen on your wrist and you know such a small computer on your wrist, but Apple's really just, again, doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on fitness and health and all that good stuff. The first thing that they brought up was something called training load, which I think is really, really cool. Again, I'm somebody that's kind of nerdy when it comes to tracking your fitness aspects and all your fitness data. You know, it's a blessing and a curse, but training load is basically how they're gonna measure intensity of your actual workouts, and you're able to compete against yourself in a way that you haven't been able to compete against yourself before. But then they're also using training load to help you understand how hard you're training, and if you're even training too hard to help your body recover alongside of that. So training load is gonna be something I'm gonna definitely play with, so stay subscribed for a video like that. And then there's something called the new Vitals application or Vi the new Vitals feature, which pretty much aggregates all your different health features and different health statistics and data to give you this one consolidated look of all your different vitals, whether it is just your BPM or your VO2 or anything else that the Apple Watch is able to measure because it's measuring a lot of different data points. Sometimes it can get overwhelming, so the Vitals app is gonna help you consolidate that so you can get a good view of like, hey, you're healthy, or hey, you're not healthy, which I think is cool. But then that opens up a whole other door of, you know, health anxiety and things like that, which we don't wanna get into, but I know that that's a real thing, so definitely be careful with how much information you wanna actually be looking at constantly from your Apple Watch and your HealthKit data. And then we moved on to iPadOS 18, which is one that I was looking forward to the most because again, iPad first user, I love my iPad, I want my iPad to be my computer, and I want the iPad to be a computer replacement or option for people looking to get a new computer. But iPadOS 18 did include a lot of those features that we got from iOS 18, like being able to recustomize your home screen, move applications wherever you want, change the colors, dark mode versus light mode, the different hues, being able to have the control center be customized, so all that is coming to iPadOS. But something new that we got was the new floating bar menu and the new context menu, which is something that's coming to iPad-specific applications. It's just gonna be an easier way to navigate certain applications, and Apple's gonna put it on all of their native apps, and I'm sure it's gonna be easy to be added to third-party apps as well. SharePlay got a brand new update, which honestly would have come in handy a couple days ago, where you're able to now share your screen with somebody else and let them control it via their iPad. So if you need to maybe maybe walk your mom through something or walk somebody else through something, teach somebody how to do something on the iPad itself, you can not only take control, but then even before that, you actually draw and point things out so people can actually do it themselves. And then, drum roll please everybody, we finally got a calculator app, which I'm gonna do an entire video on separately, so definitely stay tuned because Again, Apple reinvented the calculator and they brought the calculator app the way that they should have brought the calculator app to the iPad. I'm sure they could have done this years ago, but of course you're gonna get the normal calculator experience that you got from years past. But the cool part is this new math notes feature, which is something that I wish I had when I was in high school and in college. Like, again, 10, 12 years ago, I would have yearned for this, but now I don't really see myself using this too often because I'm not solving complex equations on a day-to-day. -day. You can literally write down math equations and variables and problems and limits and calculus problems and algebra problems, and then be able to solve it in real time. And not only that, but then changing different variables alongside of that to then change the final answer, which I think is very cool. So math notes coming to the calculator app and then also being integrated into the notes app I think is a huge plus. And then talking about the notes app, we got something called Smart Scripts, which again, it's for those people that take notes on their iPad and take very thorough notes. Not only will it make your handwriting notes even neater by kind of changing it up for you a little bit, it'll still keep it as a handwritten note, but it'll make it neater for you as opposed to changing it from handwritten to like regular text format, which is cool. But then it'll also mimic your handwriting if you need to maybe change a word out. So basically it's gonna treat your handwritten notes as a regular text note, and it's gonna treat it that same way with like autocomplete and spell check and being able to reformat things. So I think that's gonna be very cool for people that take notes on their iPad. And then finally, Apple talked about macOS Sequoia. They picked literally the hardest thing to spell in the world to call their new macOS operating system, but three big things to take into consideration here. 
Number one, the simplest thing which took forever to come to Apple is window tiling. So now it can automatically tile different windows. So you, know, you don't have to like manually minimize and make them bigger to get maybe three, four or five different applications open at the same time. Number two is going to be the iPhone mirroring. I think this is super cool because now you can basically grab your iPhone and use it virtually on your Mac desktop with your iPhone being in a completely separate room. I'm assuming this works as long as it's on the same Wi-Fi and kind of within range and things like that. But they also showed off that you don't need to actually unlock your iPhone from your iPhone itself in order to be able to use this. So I think this is an awesome feature. And you can basically use your iPhone as you would use your iPhone in any other situation, just virtually on your Mac desktop. And then lastly, they brought the new iCloud keychain. They turned it into an app called Passwords. So now we have a dedicated application called Passwords to manage all of your passwords. And again, that's going to happen and come also to iPadOS as well as iOS 18. And then last but not least, Apple did talk about their Apple intelligence, their AI integrations, and how it's going to kind of better our lives. Long story short, Apple talked a lot about the capabilities and they showed a bunch of demos, which were very cool, and how basically Siri is going to get a lot smarter and how it's going to help you day to day with kind of day to day efficiency tasks and efficiency gains. Things that would have taken you maybe three or four or five steps to do with two or three different applications can now be instantly done through Siri with your voice or with text itself. So again, there was three big categories that Apple talked about. It's going to be language, so how it's going to work with language and text, images, being able to personalize images and create images from scratch using Apple's AI, and then action as well, being able to take action on your behalf. Again, not as far as like what the Rabbit R1 promised. They weren't ordering stuff from Uber Eats or DoorDash, and they weren't ordering Ubers with Siri, but I could see it getting there at some point. Just for right now, it's all going to be mostly internal, like being able to find a specific image with your voice or being able to pull something from your messages or something from your mail app, and then being able to use it into your files app. So Everything's going to work integrated and work very well together, but the idea here is to make it easier for you to get your day-to-day -day done while staying efficient without getting in the way and without having to make you kind of relearn anything at the end of the day. And Apple did spend a big portion of this on privacy because, you know, with the buzzword of AI, people are a little bit worried in terms of what that means and how much information you're giving up and how much of your freedom you're giving up. So. Apple is very adamant about how privacy centric they were, how they weren't storing anything, how Apple has access to nothing that you're using. So again, to each their own, to see exactly how much you want to be able to use, again, to each their own and how much they want to use their AI, their Apple intelligence, but it is going to be across all of their devices and it will be supported by products that have an M series chip. So anything with an M1 or newer. And then when it comes to iPhones, you need the A17 Pro, which for right now is only the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. So again, Apple spent a lot of time on this to show off demos. And like I mentioned, we will have a top five Apple intelligence features coming your way very, very soon. So definitely stay subscribed for that. But let me know in the comment down below what you think Apple's going to be doing with their Apple intelligence, with their AI. What is the coolest demo that you saw when you were looking at the keynote? There was a bunch of different ones, but again, it's all kind of day-to-day -day tasks that are going to be easier because of Apple intelligence, because of Siri and how it's being used. And I will say that Siri's new animations and how Siri looks and how Siri is going to feel does look a lot cooler than what it did before. So Apple's completely rebranding what Siri is, what Siri can do, and helping you out from a contextual standpoint of what Siri is going to be capable of in the future. So everybody, that will just about do it for this video. If you guys do want to see some of our upcoming videos, definitely subscribe to the channel because I know that Jeff Benjamin is working on an iOS 18 roundup. I'm going to be taking care of iPadOS 18 and all the features that we talked about earlier in this video. And I'm just excited to get my hands on it, install it on my main devices, which is again, install at your own risk. There have been rumors that this one could be one of the more buggier beta ones in the last couple of years because of all the different AI features, Apple intelligence features that will be coming out. So definitely be careful when you install this one, install at your own risk. But if you want to see exactly what's going on, we will install it at our own risk to show you guys exactly what is new with all these new updates. But that's going to do it for this video. Leave some comments down below of what you want us to try out, what you want us to test out, what are some of the things that you want to see in these videos, and we'll definitely make sure to take that into consideration. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And time to get to work, everybody. I'm excited to see exactly how this is all going to work. But if you want to watch some more videos like this, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.